What do you think about the quality of the sponsors, the individuals behind these SPACs? Is that critical? I mean, is that a big part of what's driven the success of the SPAC market? And, you know, we've got over 200 SPACs out there hunting for targets. How much of the sponsors themselves, the, uh, the individuals who founded those SPACs, how much do they matter? Well, look, I'm, I'm, I don't want to comment on, on anyone else's vehicle individually. There's lots of folks that have uh, raised uh, these kinds of, of vehicles in the past year or so. Um, they're uh, creating a, a broader ecosystem. Certainly, they're creating a, a, an ecosystem for more transactions. I, I would say that the 2019, so just a year and change ago, when some of the IPOs that were so high profile, Uber and Lyft, and then potentially WeWork and others, when those were troubled, and when the equity capital markets professionals had a bit of a different, difficult time judging the last round venture valuations and ratchets and, and determining what the right trading price was. And it really was the first wave, I would say, where uh, investors that were in the public domain, Fidelity and, 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 and Wellington and T. Rowe, were also investors in the private round. So the IPO wasn't their first visibility of the company. My YouTube analytics shows that over 75% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel yet. So please press on the red juicy subscribe button and smash the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a new video. Mistaken, I think to have the amount of market capitalization you have within, let's say the Churchill family uh, is way above anybody else. So why, 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 why go big and do you expect others to follow suit? Is that where the future is? Look, it's a good question. I think it's, it's important to come back and, and, and uh, essentially remind ourselves that a, a SPAC is an IPO. I mean, it, it, is, it is simply an IPO. Now, it's an IPO that is being sponsored uh, by an entity, but it has all of the characteristics of being public. So there will be IPOs that are bigger and there will be IPOs that are smaller. There will be uh, spinoffs that are, are, are the form of an IPO where major corporations spin off an asset uh, into a SPAC. So there'll be various sizes that, that take place. To know and understand which stock to buy, which is fundamental analysis, to also know when to sell the stock, which is technical analysis, plus one-on-one -on -one phone call with me and a portfolio update, join my Patreon group. Link in the description below. Michael, I want to ask a big picture question if I can. So going back to 2018, uh, the first Churchill SPAC, um, you didn't see as much action in these pre-revenue companies. Uh, these days, um, you know, electric vehicles, uh, space exploration, that sort of stuff is all the rage. How do you feel about that when you're looking at a company that um, might make a whole lot of revenue two years from now, but it's still just ramping up. Is that, is that the sort of target that, that you guys are interested in? Or, you know, from what, what you've been describing to me, you're very careful about, um, you know, these working financially. What, what's, what's your view on both that shift happening in general in this back market and whether or not you guys are interested in owning something like that? Sure. Listen, we, uh, we're looking at companies throughout the entire life cycle from very early in their development to very uh, later uh, in their process of being leveraged buyouts and needing deleveraging to grow. Uh, we, we had the benefit of being able to, on Skillsoft, uh, use a, a debt restructuring to eliminate a billion and a half of debt before we even touched the asset. We drove that for our own benefit and the company uh, partnered with us in doing that. But we look at the whole life, si life cycle of, of companies and, and what, we, what we stick to fundamentally is one, companies that should be public uh, will take public. You, you, can't, you can't bring a, a, a quote company that should always be private in the public. It has to have tailwinds in the industry sector. It has to be a growing company organically and or have the ability to grow inorganically. We have to have great trust uh, in the management and leadership. We have to have operating partners. Um, and we have many operating partners that have great knowledge of those areas of great growth today in mobility, uh, as well as in other areas. We have uh, with, within our camps, uh, 11 technology executives, uh, ranging from Sam Altman, who ran Y Combinator, and Imran Khan, the chief strategist of Snap, to, uh, to Bill Vecti, who ran Windows, and Alan Mulally, who's a phenomenal engineer and, and turned around Ford. So we're looking at uh, all kinds of high growth companies 
we need to have conviction because it's our capital, because we have a higher hurdle rate, because we have we hold it long enough. And what we've told our investors in our recent capital raises is we don't want to invest unless it has at least enough growth to be called, quote, GARP, growth at a reasonable price as a message. And in addition, we won't go beyond from a growth perspective, those companies that we don't believe the technology has been proven yet. From our perspective, it's not our job to take a technology proof bet. Uh, that's not what we think is appropriate for the public markets. And I do think some of the SPACs that are out there who will be taking uh, a, a bet that is much more binary on technology, um, that, that's an area of risk that investors, I think, are not expecting because venture capital, as you know, has a portfolio. If you have 20 investments, three of them may be home runs and 10 of them may be uh, really bad and seven may be uh, okay. But that portfolio math means there's whole sectors in mobility in particular where many of the companies just will not have the technology to be the replacement in short uh, distance travel or air travel or go through it. But there will be winners and there will be very big winners. And if we believe in the company, if it's proven out its technology, if we believe in the management, if we believe that we can set it up in an appropriate value for investors, if we believe we have operating partners that can drive value, uh, and if we believe in the company, we'll make that investment. To learn how to invest in the stock market like a pro, I mean like a real pro, enroll to my online course today, which is called Growing Well with Stocks. The link is in the description below to populate. Thank you everyone for joining today. I'm John Janarone, the Editor-in-Chief of IPO Edge. We are having a special interview this afternoon with Michael Klein, who's standing by, who's the Chief Executive Officer of Churchill Capital Corp. And he will be with us in just a moment as the room fills up. And there it is, almost 5,000 people watching today. So we have a big crowd for, for Michael, uh, who I will introduce in a second. Um, before I do that, I have to address an elephant in the room. I've received emails from no fewer than 50 or 60 of you asking about a specific news report from Bloomberg yesterday. I just spoke to Michael and unfortunately, uh, he is in a difficult position and cannot address that at all, but we have plenty of other good things to talk about. Uh, Michael has uh, led no less than five SPACs uh, going back to uh, 2018 with the first one, which is where we're gonna kick it off. Uh, then we're going to talk more about Skillsoft, uh, we're going to talk about Clarivate, and we're going to talk about the big picture. Um, so with that, Michael, if you don't mind, I'd let you, uh, like to allow you to introduce yourself quickly. For this audience, you probably need no introduction, but uh, here you have Michael Klein, uh, the CEO of Churchill Capital. Michael. Well, listen, thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, having me on this uh, special session, and I appreciate all the uh, folks that have uh, tuned in to listen. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. We've been incredibly fortunate in the business that we've built over the past uh, four years, both our Churchill Capital and our Archimedes Advisor uh, unit, which I'll discuss with you. Uh, and for those of you who I haven't worked with before or worked uh, on investments with in any capacity, uh, I have spent the past uh, 37 years uh, in this business uh, leading the investment banking and markets and banking businesses of Citigroup uh, for a number of years uh, before starting our own uh, firm uh, where we advise uh, typically large companies, large investors, sovereign wealth funds on uh, various different uh, investments, acquisitions, complex issues. Uh, and we, uh, in 2018, as John has described and, and no doubt will delve into, uh, we formed the first uh, general partnership uh, solely targeted uh, on using uh, public equity vehicles or SPACs uh, to build value for shareholders. All right, great. Well, on that note, let's let's go back to 2018. So September 8, 28, uh, September 2018, uh, you completed the original Churchill SPAC IPO. Um, over the over the uh, last couple of years, I think you've helped build tremendous awareness for the structure and the product. So. Can you, tell, can you help us understand what's helped the market evolve? I mean, going back to the end of 2018, it was very, very different. I mean, I remember it well. And now um, SPACs are basically in the front page every day. So what's, what's been behind this shift? Well, thank you. Uh, I, I have to say, um, 
I've been around the SPAC business since SPAC was a four letter word. I guess it still is a four letter word, but it's not a curse uh, any longer. My, my first uh, engagement was actually not 2018, it was 2004, 2005. We, we raised the first uh, billion dollar SPACs uh, for uh, certain private equity players uh, in that 2004, 2005 window. Uh, 2018 is when we made the decision to use our own capital uh, as principals. And that uh, came after uh, we had both raised vehicles for other people. We had sold companies uh, from Fortune 100 businesses to SPACs. And we, we had a very good awareness um, of what was uh, both the extraordinary benefits of the SPAC as a tool, uh, but also what some of the limitations were. And quite frankly, we made the decision uh, when we got into this business uh, to effectively not only utilize all of the great benefits of the SPAC structure, but also make some fundamental changes, which we helped uh, or believe we helped uh, eliminate or certainly address uh, some of the weaknesses. Now, you know, I'm really pleased that uh, we found the, the product early. I'm also uh, uh, thrilled to see the, uh, the current acceptance uh, that the product has. And I, I, I give credit really to people like Bill Gurley, who's a great investor. And, and in August of this year, uh, he uh, essentially said that SPACs were a legitimate path to the, to the public markets. And he described his so-called door number three, uh, that this was the third uh, path and that it had uh, a real value and that he, didn't, he wasn't going to be surprised if he saw very high profile companies, in fact, using uh, the SPAC as a path to go public. And that was, by the way, probably one of the most important recognitions by an investor group. But look, I, I'll say to you that we, we, we've known for a long time that there are certain real benefits to using a SPAC. And in 2018, we knew that one of the benefits was uh, for investors, of course, you have a redemption feature that's well known. But for investors, you have an opportunity uh, to review a transaction before it goes public with just much more detail than you have with an IPO. Certainly retail investors who don't have access to IPOs, but institutional investors as well. The concept of a proxy document, which is 500 pages and forward-looking forecasts and three months of marketing, it's one of the, the really unique opportunities is for investors to have a better sense of what they really will be owning uh, versus an IPO process that comes together in two weeks with uh, a small prospectus and very, very fast meetings with only the most important institutions. Now, for companies, we also knew that it was a benefit because companies have the ability to negotiate directly with a, a, a SPAC partner uh, and have the ability to not only set a value, but also use this mechanism of a merger proxy to put forward their story more clearly. But to be clear, we knew up front that there were also some real limitations. And when we started our business in 2018, we wanted to address those limitations uh, incredibly uh, uh, directly. So the first was uh, the, 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 the issues that SPACs had, as I think most on this call uh, know, and, 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 and many of you are either investors with us or, or hopeful investors in situations that are being bandied about. Um, you, you, you knew that one, uh, the SPAC didn't have the commitment to close. Uh, it didn't have the, the capital uh, that was guaranteed. Uh, secondly, uh, there was dilution from the founders uh, uh, capital. And as a result, you had negative selections. And we made a decision, John, uh